Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Judy's Creations in Crochet. Today is June the 9th 2022. I want to welcome all of my viewers both new and old not meaning you're old but who have been with me for a while. Um, I hope if you haven't already subscribed that you will hit that subscribe button and also click on the bell so that you will get all of my videos. I only generally put out one a week so you will not be overrun with videos from me. Uh, for those of you that are fairly new to the channel and don't know, I am coming to you from southwestern Ontario about an hour from the U.S. border, and I like to show finished objects. That's my, my main focus, finished objects. And as well, I like to show hand-dyed yarn. Um, lots of other channels show you yarn from the big box store. So I wanted to do something a little different. And I really, really enjoy hand-dyed yarn, as you can see by this wall of yarn behind me. And so I thought I would concentrate on showing you some of the finer yarns and uh, telling you where you can get them. I particularly like to search out Canadian indie dyers. So, um, I want to start by telling you what I am wearing, but just before I talk about it, I want to give a little background. As those that have been watching me uh, regularly, you know that I am planning to go into a craft show, semi-craft show, um, I don't know if it's really a normal craft show, at the end of June. And since I have usually stockpiled items for a fall craft show, I didn't have hardly anything I would call summery, a few lightweight shawls. So I've been very busy making items that would be appropriate for summer. And this is one of the items I just finished last week for this craft show. Now, I'll stand up so you can see the whole thing. It is it, a poncho, but it is also called a cover-up. And it's called the Easy, Easy Poncho Cover-Up. It's by Crystal from Bag A Day. And it is just really a series of V stitches and chains. Um, not hard to do. But I thought that it would be appropriate for this season because it is very open and airy. Gives you just a wee bit of warmth, maybe on a cool evening. Or you could use it as a cover-up over just a tank top or even over a swimsuit. And Crystal did suggest you could make it longer for that purpose. Um, it is also, the reason I think it's summery, is because it is made out of this yarn called Flicka. Now, I don't think you'll find Flicka in the stores anymore, even though it is a Lion Brand yarn. And that's because Flicka, in my estimation, is the exact same yarn as Comfy Cotton. So you would find Comfy Cotton in the stores. Um, although, I wish I had my comfy cotton right here beside this. Comfy cotton to me feels just a wee bit thicker. Where I know comfy cotton is rated a four. This feels more like a three. Anyhow, comfy cotton is, I believe, 50% cotton and 50% polyester. And so I've been busy trying to make items that use cotton, bamboo, combination of the two, those kinds of fibers for summer items. Um, this particular ball has 196 yards or 179 meters in it. You can see the color, 
blues and aquas and purples and it is called cloud nine and i know comfy cotton has this exact same color now i used for this i believed i used two balls i didn't keep track i might have used a little bit of the next ball the cakes, the comfy cotton cakes, are bigger than this. I believe they have something like 344 yards in them. But it is nice and soft. It is comfy, as they say. So that is one item I have made to take to this craft show I'm going to. Now, the next item is what Hope is wearing. And I'm... Uh, kind of short of space here so I'm just going to take this and turn it around so you can see her if you remember a few weeks back I made again this is a poncho but remember I made the poncho out of two shawls called the boho shawl from expression fiber arts and it was made out of this color and I got quite a few comments about how people really did like it. They liked the idea and they liked the end result. And this is made out of date night. I'll talk about that in a minute. So I decided to make another one. This one is a little gray or silvery color. And again, it has a sparkle in it. And again, I just made the two shawls and then stitched it together here and here. So it's open on both sides. And everybody commented, or a lot of people commented, on the fact that it was nice having it open on the arms, especially in the summer. So, um, there, we'll turn back now. Um, Now, date night. Date night, again, is Lion Brand. Now, um, this particular poncho, I guess, double shawl, takes three of these cakes. And did I mention it has 273 yards or 250 meters in a cake? And it is made of 82% acrylic and 18% polyester. But I learned a couple of things when I was making this second one. Didn't realize it with the first one. First of all, I said it takes three cakes. It takes a cake and a half for each half. And what I do is I make each half with a cake and then I get the third cake and I start making the extra rows on the first one, starting from the middle, and then I make the extra rows on the second one, starting from the outside, and I work toward, the two ends work towards each other to make sure I can get the same amount on both sides. Well, the first one, there tended to not be a problem because I made it actually one more row than the pattern calls for. And by the way, I will put a link to the shawl pattern from EFA in the description box. But the first one, I ended up having a ball this size. I probably could have put one more row on each, but I really didn't want to take the chance. Well, the next time I thought, well, no problem. I only had this much left and I was getting worried I was playing yarn chicken and I was lucky. I thought I'd have enough to finish it, but not enough to do the seams. But fortunately, I did. So you do want to be careful. Now, the other thing I learned is this. When you're working with this yarn, um, it says that you should use a 5.5 millimeter hook. I don't know why when I made the first one, I didn't use that size of hook, but I didn't realize it. So when I went to make the second one, 
I got out a 5.5 millimeter hook and, and that is a hook that works with the size of this. By the way, this is considered to be a number four. Well, okay, a light four. But if you recall, when I told you I was glad to find something to use this for because I tried to make a wrap once and out of it and I did not like it at all. But I really did like this poncho when I was done, and I'll tell you why. Without bothering to check, I used a bigger hook. I don't know, I think it was maybe a six and a half or a seven, might very easily have been a size seven hook. And I started this using a 5.5. And when I finished, just about finished the first cake, I realized two things. First of all, I didn't like the feel of it. I realized it didn't feel like the original one I made. Second of all, it was much smaller and I measured against the other. And then I realized I had to use a larger hook. So I took that whole first one out and I remade it with the larger hook. And I will likely make it again. I have a color I'll show you in a minute. But I will make sure I use either a 6.5 millimeter or a 7 millimeter hook anytime I make anything with this. Because when you use the size it says, it doesn't feel nice at all. When you use a bigger one, it just has a nicer feel. It's more open and it's softer feeling. So if I have time before the craft show, because you know, I only have two weeks. Um, I have several things I wanna make, but if I have time, I think I'm gonna make a third one and I think I'm gonna make it in this color. What do you think? This color is called Lapis. So it is a blue, not a true blue, and it has a pink sparkle through it. And I think I would like to make one. So I'm hoping I can make time to uh, get a third one made. At the moment, I am working on my summer object. You know that I have the video coming up for the Summer Yarny YouTube Hop, which will air on June the 21st, first day of summer. But I have to have that video ready for... Um, the lady that organized us to make her master list. I have to have it ready for the uh, about a week ahead, 14th, 15th, in there somewhere, which is only a couple more days. But I'm going to finish up the item I'm making this afternoon. So that's why I um, don't have quite as many objects to show, finished objects to show this week. But... Um, and I'll be kind of low next week. But I do have a few more things to show you. And I decided to try making summer hats. I thought that would go quickly. So I found this pattern for a summer hat. And interesting, what a, it was much more open, the pattern. And I, again, will link the pattern down below. And it was made with raffia. So I ordered a bunch of raffia in varying colors. And I thought, oh, this will be a really nice summer item and it'll be different than most hats because most of them make it with yarn. Um, I'm thinking worsted weight yarn. Um, and I thought the raffia would be really neat for summer. Yeah, well, I got the first round done and I could not work with that raffia. I couldn't make it work. I couldn't make it do the stitches. It was so stiff. I said, give this up. So I went online and um, Crystal now has several different patterns. But at the time, she just finished one very similar to this. And she used something called Rewind. And I have it here. Uh, okay, Rewind. Here is the label. And this is something you can get from Lion Brand, obviously, Rewind Tape. I have never, ever worked with a tape yarn. 
So I thought, well, I'm going to try Crystal's pattern. So I started, I did Crystal's pattern, and she kind of made a mistake and said use a 6.5 millimeter when she meant to say J was a 6. Well, I made it was 6.5. It, it was swimming. So uh, I pulled it out and remade it was a 6. It was still too big. So um, I decided to go to this pattern that I found that was made with raffia and just use the rewind instead. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but this is um, like a double, it's a V here and a double V here with half double crochets. And with the raffia tape, it was much, the pattern was much more open. The holes were quite big, but this is smaller. And I made it pretty close to the size she mentioned and uh, I did what Crystal suggested, and I put um, Milner's, I just bought the gauge, she said I put wire in the outside edge so that you could, you know, bend it the way you wanted to. I have to tell you, I didn't enjoy putting the wire in, and what I'm noticing now as I look at the hat, the ends keep sticking out. And I'm really kind of tempted to take that last row out. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinion on it. I missed a stitch there. But they're sticking out. And I have to keep putting them back in. But anyway, I made this hat. And it seemed to... There it is. There's the end. See how the end is coming out? And so you got to push it back and get it to stay in. Anyway, I really enjoyed this pattern. It was really easy to make, and I decided I'm going to make it again, and I'm going to use other colors of Rewind. So I'm going to show you um, the hats that I have made. But before I show them to you, I'm going to tell you about the yarn. So I'll put that back there. This is how it comes. It comes in a uh, ball rewind tape it is classified as a number five and you can see that it has 219 yards or 200 meters in one ball and it does it tell me what it's made out of 70 percent polyester and 30 percent viscose I can make one hat out of one ball. So I have made a variety of hats out of all the colors. Now, I didn't get every color they had. I didn't think every color was appropriate for a hat, but I'll show you the ones I did. And every hat is a slight, slight bit different size. So I made this brown one. And I'm going to make some more of each of them, but I did not put the wire in it. It is kind of floppy, but I, I get my girlfriend to be my model and try them on. I should have brought one of the my styrofoam heads in to put on to show you. But anyway, this one is a little bit bigger in the brim than some of the ones I've made, but for some reason, even though I seem to use the same hook and everything, they don't all turn out the same size. I know I do tend to leave one row out of here in some of them because when I put them on, they're hitting my ears. So I say, okay, that's long enough. I have a small head. So um, so I stop when they're hitting my ears and I don't know how that other one got so big. But anyway, there's one. It's the same color as this. This color is called Willow. I do not have the, the bands for all the others to tell you what color they are. You'll have to check on the Lion Brand site. So that one is Willow. Then I did um, one in sort of a charcoal color. And it, it's, I think it's got one less row in the brim. 
I tried first of all to make neutral colors. So that one is pretty much the same. And the other neutral color I made right off the bat. And you know, somehow it turned out just a bit smaller. But I'm not I'm not upset at having some smaller because there will be people like me with smaller heads. Um, I think they have to be varying in sizes. I think this one has a little less brim than some of them. Again, I don't know the color names, but you would see them on the website. I will put a link to this rewind tape on Lion Brand's site. It isn't, it isn't that expensive, but I made a point of um, taking advantage of a, of a sale they had. And then I thought this would be great with jeans, kind of a burgundy color. I, I tend to wear burgundies with jeans. Uh, this one is definitely a little smaller, although it has still the same size brim. And the other thing, <coughs> after my friend was here on the weekend and tried them all on again. She did prefer the bigger one. And I'm going to move up a half a size. Um, this, what does this say to use? It says to use a six and a half. Well, I definitely haven't been using a six and a half. That seems awful big. Um, anyhow, I, I was using like a five, I think, so. I will move up in size on the on the hook. And I have one more to show you. And that is this one. I thought this was a nice summer, somewhat neutral color as well. The brim I don't think is quite as big on this one. But I'm going to make probably one of each color, if I have the time, one of each color again and make them bigger. Um, I'd like to know what your thoughts are. Do you like the bigger or the narrower brims? They're all the exact same pattern. It's just that sometimes I put one last row in here or one last row on the brim part. So that's the hats I've been making. They feel very nice. This is a very nice soft fiber and I thought of making a cover-up in it, but it might, when you start stitching like this, it become quite bulky. So I guess I won't be doing that. So that's all the finished objects I have to show you this week. Hopefully I'll have a whole second set of hats that won't take long to show you next week. Um, I can make a hat in a day. And I would really like to get this made again. And if you remember that nice, bright, sparkly shawl I did from Shawl and the Ball, everybody loved it. I would like to make one more of those. Um, that's my goal, is to make another one of these. Uh, another one of these. Uh, I think there were six hats and that other shawl. And... Um, have one other thing that I want to make, but I can't show it to you until I do my Summer Yarny YouTube hop. So that's coming in, uh, in a week and a half. So that's the end of FOs. How about we talk about yarn I have received? Get all of these little balls of yarn out of the way. And I only, um, I'm only planning to show you one acquisition this week. I did have two, but I'm only going to show you one, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, I don't know if any of you follow Candy from Blue Eyed Style. Candy is um, in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia, Canada, and she has a YouTube channel as well where she um focuses most on um crochet she started as a crochet channel she has since learned to knit so she shows knitting and she also shows a lot of yarn and at one time it was yarn acquisitions but now she is trying her hand at 
dyeing yarn. She um, has dyed yarn several times and she has, after she dyes it, she sells it. She does not sell it on Etsy. She doesn't dye that much. Um, if you haven't watched her or haven't subscribed to her, I will link her in, in the description box below. She's uh, worth going to see. <clears throat> so she, about two weeks ago, had a lot of yarn. She spent a lot of time uh, after she had been working on the process. She actually showed the process and how she was learning in a series of, of YouTube videos. But a week and a half, two weeks ago, she came on with a huge batch of yarn that she wanted to sell to her subscribers. And I have bought yarn from her before when she has made it, and I have liked it. Now, so I bought a few of hers. Now, it's interesting that on camera, this has more of a pinky hue. And I thought I was getting a um, pink, dull rose into maroonish color of yarn. Close to this, but a little more to the pink maroon. And in my hands, it doesn't look the same there as it does here. This is definitely purple. Shades of purple. Now, I got it because I wanted something tonal. I have an idea of something I might make this with if I can find another color to go with it because the pattern takes two skeins. And actually, I love this color but it isn't what I thought I was getting from what's on the screen. Now, this is um, all the ones she did. She used Australian Merino, and so it's 75% Merino, 25% nylon. Feels, feels very, very nice. The fingering weight, of course, with 440 yards, and I'm looking forward to using it. And in fact, ah, I just got an idea of what I might use it with. The next one I got from her, you can understand, she did some that were sparkle. See the sparkle? So this again is 75% Australian Merino, 25% nylon. I think there's a little percentage in there of Stellina to give it the sparkle. But look at the color. Isn't that pretty? Now in this one, that looks purple. And when I put them together, they look like they go together. So I may very well put these two together. Although this could go with aqua or teal. There's even green in there. This could go with a lot. Now this feels, this feels even softer than this one, surprisingly enough. And I bought a third one, and this one is completely different. This is worsted. I don't generally buy worsted, but it's on what's called zebra yarn. Zebra yarn. So the base, when they buy it, is white with this black. It looks like zebra. And then they dye it the colors they want to get these other colors. So this is, a um, again, uh, a superwash Australian Merino and nylon, but it is worsted weight, so it has less, about 218 yards. But I really love the colors, and I'm thinking this will make a really nice cowl. I believe C.J. Brady has a pattern for, I think, a cowl um, that uses about that amount of yarn. So I'm going to look that up, because it's got every color, maroon, blue, purple, greens, a different purple, um, paler blue. So I really, really like this. And I asked her, do they ever make the zebra yarn in a fingering weight? Because I would love to get that in a fingering weight. And she thought they did. So hopefully someday, She'll have that in a, a fingering weight. Okay, so 
that's the acquisitions I wanted to show you. So one more thing I wanted to talk about today, and I'm going to start making this a regular feature. A lot of uh, YouTube creators show you whips, and I have not been in the habit of showing whips because I'm not like most. I don't have two, three, four, five, who knows how many whips. Um, I start an item and generally speaking, I finish the item. Now and then I'll pick up a second one. For example, I was working on um, finishing this shawl on the weekend, but I also had on the hook my summer yarny YouTube item. Um, but I finished this, now I'm gonna finish it before I start my next item. But I thought, <coughs> You might find it interesting to see what I, the one item I am working on at the time. And actually, I am going to do something different than, hang on, he's, uh, we do not need to get in that bag. Thank you. <laughs> he's going to crawl in a bag of yarn. Don't need that. Um, I am going to start a cow a crochet along with Expression Fiber Arts. And this is the item, I'm going to put a picture right here. This is the item we will be crocheting and it has just started this past weekend and number stage one, the first step is to be completed by June the 25th. And then there are three more steps. So there are four steps, it'll be done by the end of the summer or early September. So that's an item I'm going to be working on, pro progressing slowly on while I make other things. It's a rare thing, but when you participate in a cow, you have to work in certain time frames, and that you can't be done ahead of time. You have to show the finished picture on the date, by the date they say. So I will be working on it for the summer. And so I thought I would show you, you just saw the picture. I'm trying to decide what colors to use. And I really, really had picked out three colors I wanted, but it takes five. And I thought, okay, I'll just make each bigger and use only three, forget five. But now I realize it has a repeat in it. It has three different stitch patterns. And I thought, oh, this is too complicated. I need to stay with the way they did it with five colors. Once I've done it once, I can figure out how to do it with three colors. So I'm having trouble deciding. Maybe you'll give me your opinion in the comments below. They are using Blossom. I'm not going to use Blossom. I have uh, one, two, three four, oh, five. I have picked out, remember Blossom is one of the three summer fibers that EFA has, and I'm going to use one of the other two. So the first possible is to use their ephemeral fingering. And these are the colors I was thinking of using. And I started to cake it up this morning because I want to start it tonight. And these are the color choices. This is a little more blue. This is a little more teal. Now, I don't know if this is the order I'll do it in. In fact, I think I will reverse these two. <laughs> See if I can confuse the heck out of you all. But I thought I would put these two brighter. Anyway, that's the ephemeral, or you can call it choice one. It is very, very soft. Maybe if I did it this way with no labels, you could see it better. Choice one, ephemeral. And ephemeral <coughs> is their, um, their one natural non-wool choice. It is 69% Peruvian Pima cotton and 31% lyocell. Very, very soft. You can see the wavy texture. And there are 500 
meters, 548 yards in one skein. And this is either 18 or $19 a skein. So it is cheaper than a lot of the hand dyed yarns. So that's the first choice. Second choice, and that's what I was going to do. I planned it this morning. Then I happened across this bag sitting down here. And I thought, hmm, I kind of like these colors. See if I can get them all up in the screen. This will be choice two. Now, I could change these around. I'm afraid if I put the gray next to that light, that's too pale. I'm thinking we're better off going this way. Now, this is made with, this is their Seacoast. I'll get it up here again. This is choice two. Which is what I'm kind of leaning towards. Now, the actual pattern, as you saw, is kind of a asymmetrical um, triangle with a whole lot of color changing. Maybe that would be a better way to go. Put the dull between the two bright. I know that I'm gonna end up making this pattern more than once. Um, I might make both of these and then make the one that I really want to make. But let me tell you about Ephemeral. Again, it's uh, one of their summer yarns. And it has 12% baby alpaca, 83% pima cotton, and then 5% polyamide. So it's not quite a vegan because of the 12% baby alpaca. But again, see how nice and shiny it is. It is very silky smooth. And again, it has the wavy texture. And this has 400 meters or 439 yards in it. And um, I am really torn. Um, they're both soft. They are both, this one is definitely, you know, these are fingering weight, but I know I'm going to have to use at least a three and a half with that. And do they say, um, usually they, oh, B to G. They say up to a four. Um, this one is a little bit heavier, which would suit me a little bit better. Yeah, it's a little heavier, so I could use a size four with that. So I have a feeling I am going to be doing this one if I can figure out a color order. Okay, so that is something I am planning to be working on throughout the summer. So next week, I will have started it in one of these colors. I look forward to hearing whether you liked one or two better. They both are jewel tones. They're both my kind of colors. And I'll have that started for you to see next week. And I have at least one finished object, but I'm sure I'll have a couple more hats um, or maybe a shawl or poncho to show you. So, and I do know I did receive today, but didn't have time to get it down here. I did receive another batch of yarn. In fact, I have another one that I've been told is coming um, probably tomorrow. So I will have more yarn to show you. Very different than what I have had so far. So stay tuned to see um, what I decide to do and to see the new yarn that I got. So until next week, happy hooking! <laughs>